Hello, my name is Edie O'Chandarina, and I'm the Sales Department Manager for our Measurement Products at Radiant ZMAX. And I want to thank you for joining our webinar today. Radiant ZMAX is the world leader in color and light measurements, and we've been providing scientific grade measurement solutions for nearly 20 years. We're pleased to have Philip Nelson presenting today's webinar, Color and Luminance Measurements on Illuminated Instrumentation and Keypads. Phil has worked extensively on automotive clusters and instrumentation panels and knows some of the unique requirements and challenges in measuring illuminated characters and symbols. This presentation will last about 25 minutes and after the presentation we will bring our expert panel online to have a question and answer session. At any time during the presentation you're welcome to submit questions or comments to the questions box on the right hand side of your display. A recording of this presentation will be available on the Radiant ZMAX website in about one week. And now, I'd like to turn this over to Phil. Phil, thanks for hosting this webinar. Thanks, Edie. Let's get started. This webinar will be broken up into several sections. First, we will go over some of the challenges faced by manufacturers of illuminated instruments and keypads, as well as examples of solutions utilized by these manufacturers. Then, I will introduce the Prometric Imaging Colorimeter, the solution offered by Radiant ZMAX, as well as some examples of the types of applications in which the imaging colorimeters can be used. We will have a demonstration of the hardware and software in action, showing how we take measurements and how we perform our analysis. And finally, we will have a short question and answer session with our expert panel. Manufacturers of illuminated instruments and keypads face several different issues, including variations in the brightness of the keys and non-uniformity in the color of the keys. There can also be disparities between the brightness and color on different areas of the illuminated instrument. These inconsistencies are caused by variations in the light sources used to illuminate the instruments, as well as errors in the production of the keys themselves. Traditionally, Manufacturers of any type of illuminated device utilized human inspectors to inspect for uniformity and brightness and color of the device. This was not a cost-effective solution as you had to pay to train the inspectors up and you had to pay them to stand on the assembly line to inspect all of the devices. They began using spot meters including spot colorimeters and spot photometers which use small detectors to take spot measurements. The advantage of the spot meter is that they have a point and shoot basis which allows for quick setup time and quick single point measurements. But the disadvantage is that they cannot take uniformity measurements because they can only measure one point at a time. And if you are to measure multiple points, it's very slow because you have to move the camera every time you want to measure it. In the example on the right, if you wanted to measure the nine points on that display, you would have to move the spot meter nine different times. Also, these spot meters had poor color accuracy. Another type of spot meter used are spectral radiometers, which use a grating to measure the actual spectral power distribution of the emitting source. The advantage of this is that because there are measuring the SPD, you can get a high color and luminance accuracy, and they are a point and shoot basis which allows for quick setup times. The disadvantage, again, is that you cannot take uniformity measurements because you can only take spot measurements, and you have very slow multipoint speed. Radiant ZMAX introduced the Prometric Imaging Colorimeter lines as a solution for measuring uniformity in brightness and color. Because they are an imaging system, they have an advantage over spot meters because they can measure multiple spots at once through a rapid collection of multiple data points. This allows the Prometric Imaging Colorimeters to measure for uniformity and brightness and color over the entire display. Also, because of their resolution, they can identify small defects in the device. The disadvantage is that they have a longer setup time because they are not point-and-shoot devices, but in the example shown to the right, 
you place the Prometric imaging camera in front of the device and you can measure all nine points at once instead of having to move the camera nine different times to measure all of the points. Now I will go into how the Prometric imaging colorimeters work. The Prometric imaging colorimeters are based on how the human eye actually perceives brightness and color. Through experiments done in the 1920s, scientists established that humans actually saw brightness and color based on three CIE color-matched functions, also called the tristimulus curves. Each prometric imaging colorimeter has the CIE-matched color filters in a filter wheel inside of the camera. Using a cooled scientific-grade CCD or charged coupled device, the Prometric system measures the light through each one of the color filters so that we are actually measuring the true tristimulus information for a source. Using advanced calibration algorithms, we can compute accurate color and brightness values for each point on the image. The Prometric software suites that come with the camera provide many different types of analysis tools for testing each type of device. After collecting data with a Prometric camera, we can utilize customizable points of interest, or POIs, to test for uniformity inside a specific POI and across all the points. We can also apply a pass-fail criteria to each point of interest. The points of interest shown in the example to the right are analogous to single measurements performed by a spot meter. The key difference is that the spot meter cannot adjust its size. It will always measure a specific view angle, usually around 2 degrees. Because of this, the spot meter is going to take in all the data within that view angle. In this case, if you were to take a measurement of the talk button with a spot meter, you would also be measuring the black area around the illuminated characters. Because you can change the size and shape of the points of interest, we can measure only the areas we are interested in, in this case, the illuminated characters. Furthermore, we can use a threshold function to ignore the black areas within the POI. Data for the entire keypad is collected in one measurement with the Prometric system, instead of 27 individual spot measurements with the spot meter. Now we will go over some examples of the various applications the Prometric systems can be applied to. First, they can be used in low volume research and development fields. This includes testing of automotive instrument clusters, illuminated aviation instruments, and keypads on handheld devices. The Prometric cameras are advantageous to use because they can measure the entire cluster at once. For example, if you were to use a traditional spot meter to measure the illuminated buttons in the bottom image, you would have to align the meter and perform measurements over 25 times when you could collect all the data at once with an imaging colorimeter. The high dynamic range of the Prometric cameras allows for simultaneous measurements of areas of varying luminance. As you can see in the image of the speedometer, the large numbers are brighter than the smaller numbers, which have a different brightness than the red indicator light. The Prometric camera can easily distinguish and measure these areas of varying luminance. Also, the Prometric software allows for customizable POIs and a variety of integrated analysis tools for testing your devices. The Prometric systems can also be deployed in high volume production line testing. Manufacturers can use the basic Prometric software to perform assembly line testing of any type of illuminated instrumentation. Radiant ZMAX also provides Prometric Keyboard, or PMKB, which is an application-specific software for automated visual inspection of illuminated keyboards. This software, with the Prometric cameras, rapidly measures individual character luminance and chromaticity, as well as provides overall brightness and color of the entire keyboard. There are several different built-in testing options and analysis criteria to pass or fail the keyboard under test. 
The advantage of using the Prometric Imaging Colorimeter with PMKB is that you can measure the entire keyboard at once. You can also store different keyboard models in one database to easily switch between keyboard types. There are a variety of integrated analysis tools to analyze each one of your keyboards. Also, there is an operator mode which allows untrained technicians to take measurements, perform automated analysis, and pass or fail any keyboard with one mouse click. Now we will perform a short demonstration of the hardware and software. First we will show you how to perform simple ProMetric measurements. For setup, you would place the ProMetric imaging colorimeter in front of your device under test. In the case shown on the right, we have a G-Series ProMetric camera taking an image of a handheld device with an illuminated keypad. Using the ProMetric system, we would perform the measurement of the DUT and define our points of interest. Finally, we could run an analysis report of the POIs. In this example, I took a measurement of, a, of an illuminated keypad on a handheld device. By putting it into false color, I can see where I have my bright areas. So there's one right here, one right here. And this is indicative of light leaking around the buttons on the keypad. Now, using the ProMetric program, I can define my points of interest. I'm going to create a new point of interest set called keypad. From here I can use several different shapes to draw points of interest on my keypad. In this example I'm going to use rectangles to draw points of interest around the, my areas of interest. So I simply click and drag to draw my point of interest. And then that size is now saved. Now, and I know that the size for all of these keys are the same, so now I can just simply click to drop my points of interest into place. I can also rename them to anything I want. In this case, I'm going to use the actual characters on the keys. Now that I have my points of interest set, I can set up my evaluation types for the points of interest. By clicking this button, I open up my different evaluation types, and as you can see, I have several different evaluation types I can apply to each point of interest to test. In this case, I only want to look at luminance. I want my minimum value to be 1 nit, and I want my maximum value to be 5 nit. I'm going to click Apply to All Points so that every point of interest has this evalu evaluation type set. I'm also going to threshold my points of interest because I want to be able to ignore the black area around the keys. For this example, I'm setting my threshold to 2%. So any pixel that is 2% below the maximum value inside the point of interest will be set to zero and ignored when calculating the average. I click OK, and now I get all my data out. As you can see, these keys are passing and then the red keys are failing because they are below my one nit threshold. I'm going to save my point of interest set and now I can perform my analysis report. I simply right click and go to analysis report. I set my point of interest to be keypad and this gives me my pass or fail criteria for all the points of interest on my keypad. 
I can now print the report out for my own records. After recording a measurement and defining my point of interest set with evaluation criteria, I can use the built-in analysis report tool to see my test results. As you can see, I have two keys on the device which are failing, so this device has failed my test. I can then print off this report from my own records. If this were an assembly line setting, I could simply place my next device in the holder and perform the same analysis using the same POI set. Now we will show you how to perform PMKB measurements. Just like with the simple Prometric measurements, you place your Prometric imaging colorimeter in front of your device under test. You would perform a reference measurement of your device so that you can define your keyboard model and set up the point of interest set. You can then assign analysis criteria to each POI and keyboard model. This reference measurement also allows you to, to perform what's called a reference, where the program will look for specific keys, and if the keyboard that you are testing is slightly offset, it will find those keys and move the image back into position. PMKB will perform measurement and analysis in one click and the operator mode allows technicians to run tests without changing any measurement setups. While I could have taken measurements of the keyboard I am testing, the nice part about PMKB is I don't have to perform the analysis at the time of taking the measurement. With an existing measurement database and these keyboards, I can perform my analysis on existing measurements. This is helpful if you decide to change your pass or fail criteria for a particular keyboard model. From within the operator mode, I make sure that I have my keyboard measurements as the measurement database I am looking at. I also want to have the new keyboard set for my point of interest set. When I click OK, I simply click Test Keyboard select from one of the existing measurements. I'm going to select this one. And as you can see, as you can see, this keyboard has passed. Everything is within the correct limits. And I get many other data points about this. I, it shows me where the darkest key is. In this case, the C has the lowest luminance. I also get the brightest key, which is up here at the W. You can also set pass-fail criteria for the overall luminance of the keyboard. If the overall luminance is too low, you can fail the keyboard, or you can also make it so that if the color is not within spec, you can fail the entire keyboard based on the overall chromaticity instead of just a single key. One other powerful tool found in the PMKB software is what we call the Automated Optical Inspection, or AOI. What this does is by taking a reference measurement, it actually maps out the shapes of each one of the keys. And you take and that gets saved into a reference measurement. So in some case, if a part of the T was cut off and I took a measurement using AOI, it would fail this key based on the fact that the shape didn't match the reference shape. After the measurement is complete, PMKB automatically displays test results. You can export all test results in a measurement database to a spreadsheet for record keeping. Finally, a quick review. Some of the key advantages of the Prometric system are listed below. The Prometric systems are complete in that they are an imaging system, so you can image the entire keyboard, keypad, or instrument panel with one measurement. This is a huge advantage over the spot meters because you don't have to move the camera over and over and over again to try and get the same data. Also, they are more complete than the spot meter because you can get all of the data for the area that you're looking at, whereas with a spot meter, you might have areas in between each spot measurement where you don't have any data. 
With the Prometric system, all of the image data is retained in a database, which you can keep on your hard drive for further analysis or give to colleagues for their own analysis. The integrated software suites provide a wide range of analysis tools so that you can get the most out of the data that you're recording. The Pro Prometric systems are cost effective because they have fast results. You don't have to take the time to move the camera around to take spot measurements. You can do it with one click. They are also much less expensive than training visual inspectors, as well as more accurate than visual inspectors. The Prometric systems are, have proven accuracy to be within plus or minus 3% of reference measurements for luminance and plus or minus 0 0.003 for chromaticity measurements. I want to thank everyone for listening. Uh, now we will begin our question and answer session. Thank you.